Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dwarven.com and in this video, we'll show you how to restore your OnePlus 8T to stock ROM via fastboot command. So you could use this guide to go back to the stock ROM from the current custom ROM. It could be any custom ROM of any Android version that is not a cause of concern. Apart from that, you could also use this video. If your phone is currently stuck in a boot loop or a sobric state, then you could use the steps given here to rectify all this issue and move your phone to the OS. The only thing this video will not work in case of heartbreak. For heartbreak, you will have to use the MSM tool. I have made a separate guide and a video on the same. I link that video. You could refer to that video and get the job done. So for this video to work, your only requirement is that you should be able to access the fast boot mode. If that's well and good, then let's get started. There are two approaches. The first one is the manual approach. Whereas the second one is the automatic approach. It goes without saying that the automatic approach is quite easy and shorter to carry out. Whereas the manual approach is quite lengthy and complicated, but still I'll show you both the methods. So on that note, if you are, if possible, please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. So first and foremost, I'll, the most important thing is you have to check whether your phone is DDR4 or DDR5. So for that, you will have to verify in other words, if your phone has an LPDDRX4 or the LPDDRX5 memory chip, depending on the same, you will then have to flash the XBL config IMG or XBL LP.5 IMG. If your phone has LPDDR4X, then you'll have to flash the XBL config IMG. On the other hand, if your phone has LPDDR5X, then you'll have to flash the XBL LP5 IMG file. So let's now verify which out of the two does our phone have. So regarding this, there are three approaches. The first one is the ADV command. This works across all the custom ROM, but on the stock ROM, it will only work till Oxygen OS 11, but it works across all the custom ROM, even till Android 14 as well. Next up, we have the dialer code. This only works on the stock ROM, but not on the custom ROM. Then the third one is via root. This also works across all the ROMs. So as of now, I'm using the first method which works across all the custom ROM and currently I'm using an Android 14 custom ROM. It's the DoveFest ROM. I have linked a guide on the as well as a video. If you want, you may check out the video on how to flash the DoveFest ROM on OnePlus 8T. So currently it's the DoveFest ROM as you could see from here. So first and foremost, you will have to download and extract the Android SDK platform tools. So get it from here and extract them onto your PC. And these are the files of the platform tools. Just a minute, let me remove these. So you will get the following files of the platform tools folder. Once that is done, your next course of action is to enable USB debugging on your device. Depending on the ROM, the process might be slightly different, but it's generally the same. So go to settings menu, then go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will now get a prompt that you are now a developer. So go back, then go to system and you should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. Once that is done, let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to platform tool folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter and it will open command prompt inside platform tools. Now type in ADB devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging, use the official cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out this USB tweaks and make sure that you're getting an ID. Once you're getting this ID, you are now good to go ahead. So now you will just have to copy paste this command in the CMD window and it will bring out the value. So let's check out the results. So in my case, as you could see, it's showing as DDR4. In some instances, instead of this, you might get a value such as zero and one. If the value is zero, then it signifies DDR4. If the value is one, then it means DDR5. In my case, it's already shown as the exact value. So in my case, it's the DDR4. So make sure to note down, note down the value somewhere. So in my case, I'm using the DDR4. So I'll have to flash the XBL config IMG file. If it's L DDR5 in your case, then you'll have to flash the XBL LP5 or IMG. However, if your phone is currently in a soft brick or a boot loop state and you are not able to access the OS, then you will not be able to check whether your phone has LP DDR4X or 5X. So in that case, you will have to take a risk and go for the LP DDR4X because most of the OnePlus 8T phones have the LP DDR4X chipset. So if you cannot access the OS, then you will have to opt for the DDR4X 
and hence you will have to flash the xbl config.img at the very most your phone might get bricked in that case you could use the msm tool to get it working once again but if you are not sure then there is no other way out apart from using the lpddr4x and let's just hope it works out for you in our case since we could access the os we have got the value so let's now move ahead with the next step so now we have got the android sdk platform tools that is done so now you will have to boot your phone to fast boot mode so if your phone is currently in a boot loop or a soft break state then you will have to long press the power key for around 10 to 15 seconds to power it off once it power off make sure to unplug your phone from the pc as well then once it powers off you will have to press and hold the power volume up and volume down keys all with three keys for around 10 to 15 seconds and your phone will then boot into the fast boot mode once it boots into the fast boot mode you could then replug your phone to the pc and proceed ahead so in my case as you could see currently i'm able to access the os if you are able to access the os then you could simply use the adb reboot bootloader command to get this job done and your phone will boot into the fast boot mode if you cannot access the os then power off your phone and then use the power volume up and volume down keys combination to get this job done and once your phone is in the fast boot mode you should verify the fast boot connection for that you have to type in fast boot devices and make sure that you are getting a serial id if you are not getting any id then you will have to install fast boot drivers i made a separate guide and a video on the same you could refer to my guide and get the job done once you have installed the drivers right click on the windows icon and select device manager then expand the android phone section and make sure that your phone is being shown as android bootloader interface so this as well as the serial id next to fast boot signify that your pc is able to read the phone in fast boot mode and we are now good to go ahead so next up you will now have to download the oneplus 80 stock oxygen os fast boot rom from here go to this link and download the rom do note that the rom is only till android 11 oxygen os 11 there is no android 12 or android 13 build so get hold of the rom file from here and once you have got it extract them anywhere on your pc so let me show you i have done the extraction and this should be somewhere here itself so this is the oneplus 80 oxygen os password rom files these are all the files and we could now start with the flashing process so for fl the flashing process the step 5 we have already done the extraction you could now skip this step this was required earlier when we had the payload.bin now we don't have the payload.bin instead we have the individual partition file as you could see from here so you could now skip the step 5 and move with the step 6 so now the flashing part you could either offer the automatic method or the manual method in manual you will have to flash each of the file manually whereas in the automatic it will be done automatically so as of now let's opt for the automatic approach so, so regarding this all you have to do is simply launch the flash all dot bat file and it will first format all the data from your phone and once that is done it will get a finished message after that it will erase the user data and the data partition as well and then it will then automatically boot your phone into the fast boot d mode and then proceed ahead so as you could see it's now in the fast boot d mode now it, it will ask you if you have a ddr5 variant so in my case it was ddr4 so i will type n if in your case it was ddr5 then you will have to type in y and if you are unsure if you were not able to check then you will have to again type in n and go with the ddr4 itself so as of now the flashing has started in the fast boot d mode also make sure in the fast boot d mode the screen that you are seeing is for the dofus rom it will be different for different rom and so you might see a different screen that is not a cause of concern just wait for the flashing to carry on and the entire flashing usually takes up to around 10 to 15 minutes so let's just wait for the time frame and then we will be back so guys currently the automatic method flashing is going on so i thought let's discuss about the manual approach as well so if you want to get this job done manually then first and foremost make sure you have all the image file so simply extract the password rom anywhere on your pc and now what you have to do is flash this file individually so from the fast boot mode you will have to flash these three files and then use this fourth command to boot your phone to the fast boot d mode after that you will have to flash this file in the fast boot d mode all these files have been flashed in the fast boot d mode once you have flashed the uefi cap.img file you will then have to verify if your phone has ddr4 or ddr5 if it's ddr4 then you will have to use the following two commands 
on the other hand if it is ddr5 then you will have to use the following two commands and skip the other two commands so for ddr4 use this two command and skip these two command for ddr5 skip these two command and use these two command once that is done you will now have to move ahead and as of now i have written here to be on the safer side it's now recommended to remove and re recreate the super partition so for that you will now have to move ahead with the note one steps so after flashing the xbl or the xbl img file you will then have to delete this logical partition from your phone simply copy paste all this command likewise delete all the logical partition which have the cow in their name as well so after removing all this partition you will have to remove all the partition which have the cow in their names you could have a look of all the names of your partition as well and then remove all these partition once that is done you will now have to recreate all these partition logical partition or simply copy paste all these individual commands and once you have made all these partition you could then proceed ahead with the flashing of the rest of the file which is the flashing of the odm files and then on from here till here so again i am re repeating after you have flashed the uefi scap then you have to flash either the lpddr4x files or the lpddr5x files once you have flashed this file you will then have to go to the note one section so go to the note one section and then delete and recreate the logical partition using the commands given here first we are removing the logical partitions all the partition and then all the partition as well which have the cow in their names remove all those partition and then you will have to recreate all these partitions using these commands and once you have done so you could then resume the flashing with the odm command as shown here so once you have done the things given in the note one section you could then restart with the flashing from the odm files until here after that use this command to reboot your phone to the recovery mode from the recovery mode you have you will have to do a factory reset this is compulsory and after that you could then reboot your phone to the os so this was the manual approach and this is quite complicated and lengthy but if you want complete control over the flashing process then this is the go to choice and you have you could view all the partitions and as well as all the names and get the job done one by one so in some cases that might come in handy always make sure to remove all the cow partition i have given just the name of one partition as a example there might be numerous cow partition on your phone so make sure to remove all those cow partition the syntax will be same just the partition name will be different so make sure to remove all those partition that have the cow for example you might see a partition name something around the following lines it might be vb meta so the rest of the command will be same just the partition name will be different moreover you will have to delete both the partition a and partition b or rather the slot a and slot b of each partition as you could see from here we are removing all, both the partition a and partition b so make sure to remove the do the same for the cow partition as well remove both the a and b likewise then re remake all this partition for both a and b and then you could move ahead with the flashing of the re remaining files from here once you have flashed all this file go to re recovery do a factory reset and then reboot to the os so with that said let's now verify the re result as of now the automatic approach is still going on and the flashing is still going on it could take up to around 5 more minutes moreover you might see this message in value sparse file format at header magic this is not a cause of any concern so anyways with that said let's just wait for the flashing to complete and then we'll be back so guys the flashing is now complete and your phone will now automatically boot to the os so let's just verify the same and you could hit any key to continue and the cmd window will close and as you could see our phone is now booting to the os do keep in mind that the first boot up will take up some additional time frame this is completely normal and nothing to worry about moreover your phone will boot to the oxygen os 11 based on android 11 so if you want to flash a custom rom now then currently you are on oxygen os 11 so you will have to be on oxygen os 13.1 or the latest one which is as of now 13.1 so for that instead of installing individual ota updates you could use the oxygen updater app to download the latest oxygen os build and then install that build and with that you will be on the latest oxygen os firmware after that you you will have to then flash the 
firmware across both the slot using the firmware flasher tool which i have made a separate guide on the same so you could refer to my guide and get that job done as well so just to repeat as of now you will be on the oxygen os 11 you could use the oxygen updater app to install the latest oxygen os 13 or 14 build once you have installed that use the firmware flasher tool to update the partition file across both the slots and once that is done you could then easily flash the required rom onto your phone just make sure to use the firmware flasher tool to update the data across both the slots that is extremely important if you simply install the latest of kn os build that will only get the job half done because the inactive slot might still not be have the latest firmware so to have the latest data across both the slots you will have to flash it using the firmware flasher tool if you want a separate video on the same i will make it as well do let me know in the comment section i'll make a separate video on the same or i might have a guide as well if i could find a guide i could show you that as well so this is a guide so first of all you'll have to flash the latest password rom or rather in, in the rom which we have installed and then you could use the oxygen updater app to install the oxygen os 13.1 once that is done you could then use the local upgrade option to install this update which we have just downloaded from the app and after the installation is done you could then use the firmware flasher tool to flash the latest firmware across both the slots i have made a video on that as well so flash the firmware across both the slots and when that is done you could then flash the desired custom rom of your choice so let me just quickly set up the device i will set up offline moreover the bootloader in this case will stay unlocked as opposed to msm tool which relocks the bootloader in this case it will remain unlocked so that is not a cause of any concern and with this as you could see we are now inside the os